On December 18th, 2013, the Canadian Securities Administrators, the Association of Provincial and Territorial Securities Regulators in Canada, issued two status reports on mutual fund commissions and statutory fiduciary duty. While Avacus is encouraged by the CSA's decision to further discuss and consider the information gathered before determining what regulatory actions, if any, they intend to pursue, we remain of the view that these proposed reforms would have unintended consequences for both consumers and the advisor community. While a fee-based compensation model may work well for wealthier investors, this is not the case for Main Street Canadians, most of whom would be unwilling or unable to pay higher fees if commissions are banned. In Canada, over 9 million people receive advice from financial advisors, with the vast majority paying for this service through trailer fees. One of the biggest benefits of this arrangement is it offers consumers affordable access to financial advice. We also believe that the statutory fiduciary duty that the CSA is contemplating will put the client advisor relationship into a straitjacket. Removing the flexible common law fiduciary duty that already exists would place all advisor client relationships on an equal footing, requiring advisors to override even the wishes of their most sophisticated clients if they think the client is not acting in his or her own best interest. We support disclosure of compensation. New rules being phased in over the next two years will make fees entirely transparent. We also want to prevent bad advisors from practicing and put the unscrupulous out of business. But our approach is different. Avocus maintains that the most effective way to address potential conflict is to enhance transparency as the new rules will do, and raise professional standards in the industry. The advocacy professions model would require all financial advisors to be registered with an accredited body, meet and maintain proficiency standards, and be subject to disciplinary action, including loss of registration for misconduct. So let's not respond to the challenges facing our industry by narrowing choice and reducing access to financial advice. That's where banning commissions will take us, as both the UK and Australia are discovering. Let's put in place a system of oversight that will raise the professional bar while ensuring that this advice remains affordable. The threat of a commission's ban and a statutory fiduciary duty still loom, and we will continue to be vigilant in ensuring that regulation protects the public without hampering the ability of financial advisors to serve Canadians in these uncertain economic times.